Hey, I'm Dr. Will Carpenter, and I'm an adult reconstruction orthopedic surgeon. I work for Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance, which is a private practice group in Middle Tennessee. Our surgery center here in Nashville, Tennessee, currently has six operating rooms. It is generally only orthopedic surgery, and we have two rooms carved out for adult reconstruction for hip and knee replacements. From an adult reconstructive standpoint, we're doing about 10 to 12 cases a week. Um, we also are doing a significant amount of sports medicine as well as hand surgeries. Compared to a large hospital OR setting, the surgery center still processing room is significantly smaller, which encourages us to become more creative with processing of multiple trays. So we're planning on performing four primary hips and two primary knee replacements today with two rooms. We're gonna be flipping back and forth, trying to be as efficient uh, as we can. Um, we're starting at 7 a.m. today and planning on being finished by noon. From a staffing standpoint, we have multiple CRNAs as well as multiple first and second assistants. We're fortunate enough to have uh, two joint dedicated rooms. We're able to flip back and forth with two separate teams. With the transition of a lot of primary hip and knee replacements being taken from the hospital to the surgery center, um, a lot of our technology comes with it. And with that, we need products such as OrthoLine so that we can use these tools in a surgery center setting um, and allow us to reproducibly and as well as accurately place our knee replacements. Here we are after registering the mechanical axis and you can see how easy it is to use. I'm adjusting the varus valgus angle. I'm personally using a neutral mechanical axis with a three degree flexion according to the AP bow. This takes me approximately 20 to 30 seconds longer than manual instrumentation. However, it's very easy to use as well as the computer system um, makes it a very friendly um, user interface. As you can see here, I'm setting my depth of resection, which is approximately nine millimeters. And this is approximately four to five minutes into the case, which is average for me. Once the resection is set, we will pin the distal femoral cutting block. This is a pretty straightforward workflow for me. It really has no difference from manual instrumentation and doesn't slow me down at all. Once the distal femoral cutting block has been pinned into place, I'm removing the distal femoral surface with an oscillating saw at our preset mechanical axis. Um, here, it's very easy to use, uh, very similar to the mechanical instrumentation per the provider you use. I personally think that the tibial registration is the easiest part of the process. Here the tibial jig is attached to the proximal tibia and I'm registering the medial and lateral malleolus. We've already accounted for offset, which allows us to create a mechanical axis. This takes me approximately two to three seconds to do this whole process here. I personally will adjust the varus valgus slope according to uh, the patient's knee as well as the deformities that I'm working with. Um, this workflow is actually faster for me than a manual instrumentation because I trust the system so much and have a significant amount of confidence with the readings that I'm getting on the computer screen as well as in real life time. Uh, once I have felt like I've found the appropriate depth of resection, I pin it into place with two smooth pins, which will then secure with a poker clamp. This is a pretty streamlined process. Once again, this has saved me a significant amount of time because I feel very comfortable with the readings that I'm getting as well as um, the accuracy of the mechanical axis uh, and the posterior slope. After I make my distal and proximal cuts, the lantern allows me to gap balance appropriately. Previously, I would use a spacer block and go by feel with this step. However, this actually quantifies the numeric values of the medial and lateral gaps, which gives me a better um, idea of what I'm working with. In this case, the medial compartment is tighter than the lateral compartment, approximately 18 to 20, which signifies with me that I can maybe release a little bit more medially. And I generally do this earlier on in the procedure with the lantern technology. Here we are setting our flexion gap. We just created a rectangular space, which is parallel to the tibial cut. And once we have determined the appropriate depth of our section, we're using pins into an implant specific drill plate, which is unique to each manufacturer. This gives us the luxury of being able to use any implant with this system because it's an open platform uh, and it allows you to not be bound either in an ASC or a hospital setting. At this point, we're finishing the case by impacting the polyethylene and getting our final checks with varus and valgus stress at 0, 30, as well as checking anterior to posterior stability uh, with 90 degrees of flexion. 
Uh, once again, I feel extremely confident with this technology. It gives me accurate and reproducible results that have translated to improved patient care, and I couldn't be happier with the outcomes we've seen so far. The beauty of OrthoLine is that in a surgery center, even though your partners might use one implant and use a different one, you can still use it on all patients because it's an open platform. It allows you to hit that target that you're looking for, whether it's a mechanically aligned knee versus a kinematic knee, and it allows you to hit the target you want reliably as well as accurately. It is a very small footprint. We only need one tray compared to multiple with minimal amount of disposables, and this allows it to run efficiently as well as helps the SPD um, throughout the whole process. The Lantern interface is as easy as an iPhone, which the majority of us have, and it allows the tech as well as other reps to use this efficiently without any significant complications. We just finished our six cases for today. Everything went smooth. OrthoLine helped us provide that quality of care that we're looking for in the ASC setting with our two knee replacements going perfectly. Thanks again for coming out to our surgery center today in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, the surgery went perfect, and I'm glad we can showcase some of the technology that we use today and how we can provide patients with the best care and quality that we can offer.